Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from the most remote place in the world, and that is the Hawaiian Islands. A lot of people don't realize this. The Hawaiian Islands is the biggest state in the whole nation. If you string us out from the baby island of the big island all the way to the little atolls way off uh, in the distance, we have, we cover the widest range of miles of any state in the union, and our little little baby island, uh, the the we call it the big baby, the big island of Hawaii, has been spouting uh, lava lately from Mauna Loa. We have as a guest today Dr. Scott French, who lives there on the big island. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. You know, as Catholics... Uh, I love the, I love the, in the scriptures it talks about uh, how the early church, uh, when they got together, they would get together and they would they would talk about the word of God. Uh, there would be someone would preach from the word of God, and then there would be the the sharing of the bread uh, uh, of the Eucharist. Even even in scripture, it goes back to there. And even in Mass today, when you go to Mass, it begins with the liturgy of the word, uh, the the Old Testament, the New Testament writings, the Psalm. And then we always stand for the gospel is shared. And then we have the, the, the liturgy of the Eucharist, the, the, the sharing of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ uh, with, the, with the wine and with the bread. They've been doing it for 2,000 years, everybody. And um, as Jim Gaffigan says, if you haven't been to Mass in a while, it's still going on. What I love about the Catholic Church is wherever you go, we've, we've traveled to Croatia, we've been in Greece, we've been in Israel, we've been all through Europe and, and South Pacific, Australia, all over the world. Uh, when you go to Mass, it's the same Mass. It's the Liturgy of the Word, and then there's the Eucharist. And so first we, we, uh, we, uh, we celebrate the, the Word of God, that the, Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, He is the Word, and, and then we celebrate Him again in the Eucharist, when the when the Word of God comes to us in the Eucharist. So we have with us today a good friend of mine who first, he lives on the Big Island. He's part of the Magis Center Ministry uh, with Father Robert Spitzer and is also an emergency room physician. Uh, and so f- welcome to the show, Scott. Thanks, Bear. Thanks for having me on. You be been, The Baby Island's been putting on quite a show over there. Quite a show. <laughs> Very, be- yeah. God's nature uh, is is amazing. That's for sure. Well, you've sent me really beautiful pictures of at nighttime, when the lava is just so bright and and flowing. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah, you have to do it. You have to do it the nighttime because yeah, once the sun comes up, it, you don't see the lava is is easily. Yeah, right yeah. before right before dawn is is just the it's the it's the greatest. Yeah. Yeah, I remember being over there on the Big Island and driving on this road, mm-hmm. and pretty soon there's lava, and you see a stop sign, uh, there that is actually the lava has flown over the road, flowed over the road, and and around that stop sign and saying stop, but apparently the lava the lava didn't listen. I actually have a friend, one of my best friends here on the island, Crazy Todd Robertson. He's a big wave surfer who lived over there in the part of the island where the slowly the lava flowed in, you know, inch by inch, very slowly, and basically uh, melted his whole town, took over the whole town. So uh, I think truth is like that. Truth uh, is, is, is it's like, um, I think it was Augustine that says, truth is like a lion, you know, it, it can defend itself. And so this this woke... A cancel culture, anything goes sort of environment that we're living in right now. I think that that lava of truth is just, just it can't be stopped. It's just, it just, it's going to just keep. It's going to just cover over all of the lies and all of the confusion, and and that that the fire of God's love and of His truth is just going to just keep right on moving, and you can't stop God. Yeah. We've been talking. St. Paul about, calls it the sword of truth. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a sword too. Yeah, it's a fire. It's a consuming fire and a sword. 
Love it. Yeah. Love is a consuming fire. So we haven't. We yeah. we very rarely have a returning guest, but we wanted to get you right back on the show. We just had a, a whole episode uh, recently on. Uh, what is truth? And we wanted, and we said that truth is a person. That person is Jesus Christ. Well, that truth, that person, Jesus Christ, we can receive every day in the Eucharist. Uh, and you, and uh, you, we, we ha- wanted to have you back because I know the Magic Center has done a lot of work in the area of the Eucharistic miracles. So, first of all, why do we think? Where, where? What's the scriptural foundation for us thinking that the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Well, just like you start out with, it's it's in the Bible when, you know, if Jesus is the word, like it's in John, Jesus is the word and everything was created through him. When he says, this is my body, <laughs> that bread becomes his body. So he, Jesus Christ instituted it so that he could be with us every day, every hour throughout time uh, in the Eucharist. And unfortunately we live in a time where we've lost the truth and now 70 percent of catholics do not believe in the real presence of the eucharist hence the eucharistic revival that the usccp has done which is is a blessing because um we've become unmoored from the author of truth jesus christ just like we talked about in the last segment so is it true or not and and um and we're going to talk about miracles and we're going to talk about the eucharistic miracles and i think people need to understand uh, something about miracles. So the Catholic Church is very careful about uh, miracles because we don't want to, the Catholic Church doesn't want to approve a a, a false miracle, right? Because then that would that would undermine the Catholic faith. So what we're going to talk about with Eucharistic miracles, have, it's been studied by scientists and they can't explain what's going on. And we'll get out, we'll go, we'll go talk about what they can't explain. For example, it's living heart tissue that start out as a spot of blood uh, on a uh, consecrated Eucharist. But but so and remember, we talked a little bit about science. Science is the science of observation. So science can't see a miracle, but it can see the results of a miracle. And that's what the Shroud of Turin is. And that's what the um, every day the Eucharist is. And and that's why it's my belief, and I, I think there's a lot of people that believe the reason that there are so many 21st century Eucharistic miracles is because precisely what we just said, 70% of Catholics don't believe in their own presence. And I think God is saying subtly, because if he did it, you know, if there was a Eucharistic miracle every day, which there is in, in mass, mm-hmm. if he showed it to us or projected it on the sky, we lose our free will and God res- respects our free will. Well, see, I, I, so that's why. Was it Pascal that said that God hides himself just enough so that the one who doesn't want to find him won't, but the one that does want to find him will? So there's an invitation, but Jesus doesn't say, I'm the rewarder of those who kind of sort of want to get to know me. It says, I am the right. reward of those who diligently right. seek yeah. me. And I was thinking about on the, the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, after Christ was crucified, they were sad, they were depressed, they were walking, they were on, the way, on their journey home, hadn't heard about the resurrection. And Jesus appeared to him, appeared to them. And the first thing he did is he brought them the liturgy of the word, which is our first part of our mass. When he went through the entire Old Testament and showed them all the things in the Old Testament that had to do with Jesus Christ, uh, with him. And then he turned to the time of the liturgy of the Eucharist, the liturgy of the, uh, uh, as we do in the mass, the second part. And they stopped and Jesus uh, broke the bread and blessed it. And then he disappeared. But it's not that he left. He actually, his body, blood, soul, and divinity entered into that host. Yeah. And, and, and it, thus the, the, Euchar- the, the first Eucharistic miracle after his resurrection. And so we have, it, it's, so, it's so amazing that, there are, I just want to say this first. So when Jesus talked about, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you can have no part of me, he lost his whole fan club. You know, there's thousands of people who said this is too too hard of a teaching. Uh, and in fact, uh, he didn't put out a press release the next day saying, I was just kidding, I really meant it this way. He lost a good part of his following. And so many of our Protestant brothers and sisters, this is a sticking point to them. It's too hard of a teaching for them to really accept. But, but uh, having said that, people... To, to in order to have to to celebrate the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, that needs to be done by a priest, a Catholic priest, 
who's been who who through apostolic succession has been given that anointing in order to do that. So if a if a Protestant pastor uh, hosts holds a communion service and he's come under the conviction that 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 the Eucharist really that the, the communion really should be the body blood soul and divinity when that when a Protestant says yeah but it isn't uh, well the fact is it isn't because that celebration of to 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 have that moment of transubstantiation take place it needs to be done in the hands of a Catholic priest who's in persona Christi in the who is uh, represent who is is to us Jesus at that moment so we've laid the groundwork. Uh, we're going to be we're going to be taking a break here in a moment, and I want you to dig into the conversation about the the scientific background of all these Eucharistic miracles that we've seen throughout history, but even more so now. We're talking with Dr. Scott French. Uh, tell us just you got a minute to tell us about your work with the Magis Center and how people can find you. Will you do that for me? So you can find my email at scott at modgescenter dot com, and I work with Father Robert Spitzer uh, since twenty fifteen, and uh, I go around giving talks about the Shroud of Turin the Eucharist, uh, and also the connection between them and the Bible. And just back to what you said about the road to Emmaus, what's fascinating is those they represent us. Those disciples were not in the upper room, so they didn't know about the institution of the Eucharist. And that's why he disappears at that time, because again, he's showing us that 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 remember that's in the lines it says they recognize him. Well, they didn't; they weren't there. So that shows how much God loves. He can, and he came to them before he came to the to the apostles, because it's after that that he then goes to the apostles. So that's really about us. That's we're talking, what's fascinating. We're talking with Dr. Scott French. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know what? I love Sophia Institute because they uh, have published three of my books. Uh, we have the uh, Surfer's Guide to the Soul. They have my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And my new book, which is coming out soon, is called 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And you know what another book that they've written, that they've recently published, is by my friend, uh, Father Bryce Lundgren. He's the cowboy Catholic priest in Wyoming, and his book is called The Cowboy, the Catholic Cowboy Code. So uh, we love Sophia Institute. Go to their website, or go, or you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. 
and you can buy our books there, or you can go, of course, on Amazon. But my book, uh, my newest book, uh, 12, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone?, breaks out several chapters on what it takes to really be a man. And one of those is uh, How a Man Treats a Woman Defines Him. Another one, another one of the chapter titles is uh, uh, that a man must be dangerous. What does that mean to to be to be a man? What it means to be to be a man who is dangerous? We have a dangerous man with him right now because he's fighting spiritual warfare over the battle for truth. Dr. Scott French, who is a who is with the Magic Center and is also a, a uh, emergency room physician, and lives on the Big Island of, of, of Hawaii. So t- we're talking about Eucharistic miracles, but we want to look at it from a scientific point of view. G- just dig in. I'm giving you the mic. <laughs> okay. So I, for, I will first want to go back to what you did a great job talking about the Eucharistic miracles. And again, I want just to emphasize that God has shown up. You know, not only what are Eucharistic miracles, why are the Eucharistic miracles? And I, and I think that they're they're here today because God knew, because he's, he's outside of time, that we would need uh, scientific evidence that this stuff is, um, it, it, uh, that we don't have an explanation for, for science. So what, el- what other explanation is there? And that's what is true of all of these uh, Eucharistic miracles. But I first want to go back to two of the more famous ones uh, prior to the 21st century Eucharistic miracles, the one in Lanciano in 750 AD, and the one in uh, in Balsana, which is is housed in uh, uh, um, Orvieto in uh, in Italy, and in both of these cases, it was priests who were doubting the real presence of the Eucharist, and uh, and right in front of uh, them in the one in Lanciano, the wine turned into blood and the Eucharist turned into tissue. Now in 750 AD, there were no microscopes, so it wasn't, it wasn't fully um, analyzed until 1971. And they found heart tissue. That well, the, well, let, the me, let, me que- let, let me, tissue. let me ask you a question. So this happened then, but it's continuing to happen since 750 AD with no, this? No, no, it, it's just, it's, it's existed for 1300 years. But, yeah, but, it, but yeah. it has never, if it is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, if it's the body, blood of body and blood of Jesus, then it could not decompose. That's right. Right, because it's the glorified body of Christ. Well, that yeah. It was so, because so, again, remember a Eucharistic miracle, the heart tissue is human, right? It's well, from the, Mary, right? It, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but the the fact that it still exists, or and as we get into in the twenty first century, it's still alive. So twelve hundred fifty years later. Twelve hundred fifty years later. Because he says that, yep. that you will not allow my body to suffer corruption. Yep. Okay, so that that what happened 1,250 years ago, we can still see that today. Tell us, tell us, dig Correct. into that one more. So that one is uh, again when they when they analyzed it in 1971, uh, they found uh, that Dr. Linoli in Italy found that it was heart tissue, and again. Uh, Fast forward to the 21st century Eucharistic miracles. Let me just list them right now so you can get it. The first one is in 1996 of Buenos Aires. And the reason we call that a 21st century Eucharistic miracle is because the findings didn't come out until 2005. Okay. Uh, the next one is on, um, is on October uh, 12th. Uh, I'm sorry, October 22nd, uh, 2006 in Tixla, Mexico. 10 days after Carlo Acutis died, who's, who's going to be the first millennial saint and had a great devotion to the Eucharist and did Eucharistic websites. Um, and then um, and then the next one is in Sokoka, Poland on October 12, 2008. So on the same day that Carlo Acutis died, but two years later. And then the, 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 the last uh, 21st century Eucharistic miracle happened on December 25th. 2013 in Lenica, Poland. And all of these Eucharistic miracles, including the one in 750 Lanciano, have heart tissue as the Eucharist. Uh, that Eucharist turns into heart tissue and where there's blood, so in, in the modern ones, the 21st century ones, they start out as blood and then that turns into heart tissue. And um, it's living and it's type AB blood, which just so happens to be this the AB positive blood, the same blood that's on the Shroud of Turin. Uh, 
So they're all, they, <laughs> they all go together and we'll talk about the passage in Luke 22, 44 about the sweating of blood uh, and how that relates to the 21st century Eucharistic miracles as well. So it, again, the, what God is saying to us is, look, this stuff is real. The 70% of Catholics that don't believe in the real presence and, and our Protestant brethren, is, uh, is it, God is, you know, gently, he's a gentleman. He's never going to force it down. He's going he's gonna to show it. He, and and it's up to us to have that leap of faith. So well, let's go back to that to the first one that you mentioned. Yeah. My understanding, yeah. and I'm not sure, you know, if it's in all cases, but it's always heart tissue. I yeah. also understand that it's from a certain part of the heart, the part that pushes blood out. Well, yeah. The, the, so just just to, you know, review what a heart is. A heart, the heart is a pump. So every part pushes blood out. Some just has thicker muscle than others it's in the wall of the ventricle it's in the heart tissue because it's it's basically a pump it's got a chamber that fills full of blood but it you comes know, in chambers but blood yeah. it comes in and then it goes back out and i had understood with one or right. at least one of the those that it's the part of the heart where the blood flows out yes yeah that's true so, so it's, it's and, life and, giving and, in other words it's life giving it's life giving the, the and life giving yeah ab blood is the universal uh, re uh recipient and what, it's that, the what does that mean? Type. What does that mean? I mean? No, again, God is receiving us, right? God is receiving us. But what do you mean by it's the universal recipient? I don't know what that means. Is that a technical? Well, term? in other words, you can give. Uh, it, it, it can it can take the blood from anybody. Okay. Or it's type O. You, okay. can, you can give type O. You know, some some people need type O because you know they'll reject it. So, so that, and and type AB blood. AB positive blood is the rarest blood type in the world, but happens to be in about twelve percent of Jewish people. No kidding. Okay, that's so yeah. fascinating. So go, yeah. go on. God's showing us, and we could just, you know, hey, we, <laughs> he's inviting us. We just have to look. Again, there is truth. And that's the nice thing about truth. There, it is binary. Either there was a resurrection or there wasn't. Either it is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, or it's not. There, you know, truth isn't relative. And so we now, God is, because we knew he would, we would have enough science at this point, that we can look at the effects of these miracles and we're finding, like I said, in all those cases of the 21st century, it's living heart tissue. And we'll go into detail. And, and do that. that. Let's and, let's do. Let's go into detail now. Starting with the the first one that you mentioned. Let's go into the specifics of each one. Okay. So so uh, in in the case of Buenos Aires, in Tixal, Mexico, um, in Sokoka, Poland, and Lenica, it's a uh, in Poland it. It's a Eucharist that falls to the floor. They don't they don't pick it up in time to consume it, so they put it in a vessel of water, um, which is the appropriate thing to do if some appropriate thing to do to let and, it dissolve. You know, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time it dissolves. All right, that's what that's what works. Every once in a while, <laughs> a couple times, there was actually several of them in Buenos Aires. Um, and and then in so and then in Texel, Mexico, Sococa, and then uh, Lenica, it doesn't dissolve, and and they put it away. They put it away for you know in some cases a week or two. They come back and look, and there's still nothing. It's still there, and then eventually in all of these they see a spot of blood. They see a red spot on it, and and they sometimes wait months sometimes even years later before it's then finally examined because you know blood spot doesn't go away it doesn't so so then they um so then they take it to a uh, they take it to different labs and again they use non-catholic scientists right because you don't it, again the catholic church has to be very careful about what it's affirming that science shows in all these so like for example at lourdes there's only been 70 approved uh, uh, miracles uh, and they have to have strict criteria, you know, that has to be instantaneous, has to be witnessed by credible witnesses we're, we're, and all that. So, we're, talking with so Father, we're, thing. we're talking with Father Scott French, um, uh, who's with the Magic Center and is also... Doctor, is, not Father. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry do, did I say Father? Well, you're wearing <laughs> bl a black shirt, you know. <laughs> yes, you, you're right. just a wannabe, I guess. No, we're Dr. Scott <laughs> yeah. French. Uh, we, didn't want me to, we didn't mean to promote him. Dr. Scott French, who's an emergency room physician, is also with the Magis Center and lives on the Big Island. And we're going to be continuing to talk, go into more detail and depth uh, with the Eucharistic miracles. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up Church. 
Church is a word that conjures up a gunny sack of assorted reactions. You know, for some it raises pleasant memories, but for others, church no doubt summons up, well, a negative response. This calls for a little sorting out. First, church is not a building. Rather, it's a gathering of folks who are supposed to grow in love for Christ and others. In the New Testament, original language, church literally means called out ones. Folks called out by Christ to corporately worship God, honor God, minister to folks, and impact the world with the truth and the power and the love of the gospel. Second, going into a church doesn't make someone a Christian any more than going into a barn makes you a wagon. It's about relationship, not religion. Third, some folks don't go to church because of hypocrites. Well, how do you do? You can find hypocrites most any place. So get over yourself and them. Imposters are everywhere. My advice, ignore hypocrites and associate with the real deal church folk who live and love like Jesus. They're available. Befriend them. And by the way, even the good Christians are still under construction, so give them a little space and grace. Furthermore, if you're following the Lord, you're still under construction too. Takes one to know one, partner. Now, if you're thinking you can faithfully follow Christ and not be a part of a local church, well, you're dead wrong. Two-thirds of the New Testament was written to the church. You aiming to throw away two-thirds of the New Testament? Buck up, boys and girls, and get on with getting on with your local church. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to uh, Prime Video. We have our, our whole series, Long Ride Home. Season 1, 2, and 3 is showing on Prime Video, as well as on the EWTN network, of course. And uh, Season 4, EWTN will be airing sometime this spring. We're working really hard on, do, on finishing those 12 episodes, all filmed in the islands of Hawaii, uh, of our TV series, Long Ride Home. So we invite you to go to, to uh, Prime Video and watch it there. And... Uh, of course, watch us on EWTN. We have as our guest today, Father Scott French. He's a emergency room physician, and he's a he he works with the Magis Center, Father Robert Spitzer's uh, ministry, and uh, he has really dug deep into uh, Eucharistic miracles. We've just given the overview behind those, and now, uh, Scott, will you begin to walk us through? One by one, in depth, each of these each of these miracles have all have all of them been approved by the church, or any of them been approved by the church at this moment? Do you know the way Eucharistic miracles work? Is that it has to be approved by the bishop there, uh, and then the Vatican may or may not approve it, and okay. so it has to be the local bishop that has to approve it, and. And uh, almost all of these have been approved by, uh, by the local, local bishop, bishop. Okay, but, but not but, everyone. So, right? But we're yeah. looking at it from only a scientific point of view. Correct. We're okay. looking at it from the scientific point okay, of view. Okay, so right? let's talk with the, about the, very, the one that occurred in 750 AD. Tell us what we know about that. 
Uh, well, we already covered that. I mean, we don't know. All we know is that it's heart tissue. Um, it's, you know, 1,250 years old. Um, and it is, uh, and there's still, there's blood in it, uh, the uh, type AB blood. It still exists. So again, that's a miracle in itself that it, it still exists after that period of time. But it's not live tissue like the other four 21st century Eucharistic miracles are. And um, um, and we'll get into the other stuff. So let's let's go to the the one in uh, Buenos Aires, which again well, there were several. Of wasn't there one before Buenos Aires that you mentioned? Yeah, that, that's the Lanciano. Which Lanciano. was the one before that then? Uh, there was the one in um, in uh, Orvieto, which was in Balsana. That was in the 1200s. Can you tell us about that? That, that didn't have heart tissue. That was just a blood stain. That's just a blood stain on the corporal. Can you tell us about that? So that is, um, a, again, a priest was, uh, he was front coming, traveling from Germany, was uh, having doubts about in both the Lanciano and the one in Orvieto, which really was in Balsam, which is like 12 miles away, uh, was having doubts about the uh, real presence. And in, and, and, uh, in, and the one in Lanciano, it, it, right in front of the congregation, of course, the congregation went, went wild. Um, the the host turned into t tissue. They didn't know what it was until uh, the 1971 turned into heart tissue, and then the wine turned into blood. And again, they didn't know it was type AB blood. And uh, same thing in 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 uh, in uh, Orvieto is that it. Uh, the the priest was having doubts and the and the host started bleeding and some of the blood spilled on the corporal you mean on so begin what do you mean on the corporal so the corporal that's on top of the um uh of the uh the chalice of the altar yeah on the altar so yeah so it's so and they and they preserve that and you can see that they bring that out i think a couple times what what scientific tests have been done on that not really any scientific tests have been okay. performed on that. Okay. Yeah. And then we go more so, to the modern era. Then we go to the modern era. So Buenos Aires and, and uh, Pope Francis was involved with this. He had them photograph it. He became he was Bishop of Buenos Aires. We so had them photograph it. Uh, so again, same thing. Host falls to the ground. They notice it. it it's too late to consume it. They decide to put it in water. It, it doesn't disappear. It eventually develops a red spot, and the red spot grows, um, and they finally decide, we better get this studied, so they sent it to some local uh, pathologists in a local medical school in Buenos Aires, and they say, this is, you know, this is, there's heart tissue here, and there's blood, type AB positive, um, we don't, we can't explain what this is, you know. And so then they sent it to other labs, and they eventually end up sending it to a, a famous pathologist up in New York City, uh, Dr. Zugabi, and um, he's both a, a pathologist and a cardiologist. And they don't tell him where this sample is coming from, and he he examines it under a microscope and looks at it. And again, he's a pathologist you know, whose specialty is heart, and he said, uh, this is clearly a, you, this is from a live patient. <laughs> this is from a live patient uh, whose heart was under stress and he's got white blood cells in the wall of the ventricle, the pumping part, the left ventricle near, uh, near, the, near the outflow track of the left ventricle. And, and, um, and where did you get this what, from? What does white they, blood cells mean? To a yeah, we're going to get into that. So, okay. and I'll, I'll do that in a second. So, and, and so, uh, they uh, they say um, it's from a it's from a Eucharist. It's from a, a piece of bread, and and he says I don't believe it. So, of course, eventually he <laughs> he does believe it, and and does more studies on it. So, the reason the white blood cells are critically important is remember in luke twenty two forty four. remember luke was a gentile physician okay and what happens in luke right. twenty two forty four? that's the where jesus sweats blood well that's a real medical con uh, condition we call it hematohydrosis just so what happens is it's it's people under stress so i'll give you a modern day example of it there was a woman 
it's a very rare a woman was saying goodbye to her uh, husband and kids as they're driving away and right in front of them uh, they're killed in this horrific car crash and she falls to her knees and sweats blood so it's a sign of severe stress well guess what you know the garden of gethsemane He's got all the psychic stress, all the spiritual stress, and he's going to go horrific stress, you know, physical stress uh, in, during the crucifixion. So that's why it's in the Bible. And that's why it shows this in the, um, that shows how much Jesus suffered, how much he loves us. It's, it's a sign of how much he loved us and shows that he, you know, again, it's human heart tissue, right? Which again comes from Mary. And the fact that it's still living heart tissue is because of the divine. So remember, we as Catholics understand the real presence is it's he, you know, Jesus was fully human, his nature, a fully human nature and a fully divine nature. But his heart tissue, that's why that's the sacred heart and the immaculate heart uh, is, is, you know, the, the flesh. It comes from, you know, human. So it comes from Mary. So so that's uh, so 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 that's the first time that, you know, there's there's white blood cells in there. Um, and, and again, the white blood blood cells indicate uh, that he was sweating drops stress, of blood. severe stress, physical, okay. uh, and you know. So, like, like, like they first said, he said this is like he was beaten around the chest, which he was, but later, right? Mm -hmm. But again, remember, God's outside of time, so that you know, so, so that he that's why it presents to us every day and every you know uh, th through for eternity, basically, because he's outside of time. So that shows. So what that demonstrates that that's the, what the Eucharistic miracles demonstrate is that our human or humanity exists after bodily death, right? Because his was his human na his human nature still exists. So that's and and then that's and the resurrection is evidence. The the shroud of turn is evidence of the resurrection. This is now evidence that our human nature. Our body does survive, just like we talked about before, about the near-death experiences, about how our soul survives bodily death. Well, so does our body. It is, it is resurrected. So that's, that's the importance of it. So they, it's sent to other, other labs, and they all validate the same thing. So uh, the next one is in Tixla, Mexico, uh, 2006, October 22nd, 2006. And here again, host falls to the ground, and um, they put it in a vessel of water, and it doesn't dissolve either. And it has a, a spot of blood, and the spot of blood keeps growing because um, it's living. Because it's living, and on top of it, there's several doctors. Actually, Dr. Zigabi is part of that, but there's other doctors, Dr. Gomez. There's, there's several doctors involved, uh, both in, in both in uh, Mexico and elsewhere, um, and they do this extensive studying, and they realize that the blood is flowing out from the center <laughs> of the Eucharist. Well, let's let's take a pause here. We'll, we got to take a break. We're talking with Dr. Scott French, and and how can people find you, Dr. Scott? Yeah, at the Maja Center, Scott at MajaCenter.com. How do you spell Maja Center? M-A-G-I-S-C-E-N-T-E-R, Maja Center. Okay, we're talking so about Father like Scott. Yeah. Scott, Fr Father Scott, yeah, Father Scott French, who is uh, on the big island. Did I call you Father again? You or did. Because <laughs> he's wearing black, and I'm talking, thinking of Father Robert Spitzer's Maja Center. And, it's because and, Spitzer, but, I'm channeling but it's, Father Spitzer. But it's right? Dr. Scott French. <laughs> who lives on the Big Island. We'll be right back. We're going to talk more about uh, the other current uh, century Eucharistic miracles. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com.
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your guide, Bear Wozniak. We uh, want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We have a, a great web store uh, uh, with all kinds of gear and books and uh, uh, even T-shirts and everything that you can imagine. Great place to go shop for gifts for both men and women. Uh, we have as our guest today Dr. Scott French. He is the he is a uh, emergency room physician, but he's also with the Magis Center. We're talking about... Eucharistic miracles. So uh, continue where you left off. We were talking about the one in Mexico. Um, so, the, so the one in Mexico, again, took some Mexico in 2006. Um, they determined after extensive several years of study that it, the blood is coming from the inside of the Eucharist. It's flowing out uh, just like normal human blood would. It's not, someone didn't dump blood on it. Again, it's type AB blood, and it has its living heart tissue uh, as, as well, just like in 1996, and it's got white cells in, in the wall of the ventricle, um, again, showing the signs of stress, just like in Luke 22, 44. So um, the next one uh, is, to me, pretty, pretty impressive because it, there's some things that happen after uh, it's examined. So this is in Sokoka, Poland, uh, and same thing, Eucharist falls to the ground. Uh, and it is um, put in a vessel, it doesn't dissolve, it turns into a red spot, and then the red spot turns into uh, tissue. It's taken to a medical school, and again, in all these cases, just like this one, these are not Catholic scientists, and they, they do electron microscopy. And they don't know where it came from. They're, they're and just they saying, don't know where it came yes, from. Right. Um, and they're, they do electron microscopy, and in this case, you uh there's you can't tell where the bread start stops and the heart tissue begins yes i've heard this about yeah i guess i read it in dr Spitz's book. and in fact it's so scandalous that that um the head of the medical school and and the newspapers they say this is you guys have faked this so they send it to a yet another medical school and they come up with the same conclusion and they they say you know we can't explain it but this is and then on top of it the uh, someone comes up with this theory that the catholic church has killed somebody because that's why there's live heart tissue yeah right i, I can mean, imagine you know yeah. Satan's not happy when the truth comes out. That's for darn sure. Just so we talk, we're in this crisis of truth, and 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 when you have truth standing in the face, Satan doesn't like it. So 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 they've gone through all this and and almost lost their careers because they told the truth, and 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 one of their comments was is that. We don't have that technology today to do that. You can't tell where the bread stops. And uh, so it's really stopping in mid, mid to substrat. I mean, God is just showing transubstantiation. It's just, yeah, it's, right there. He's shouting <laughs> in, in his way. He is shouting. And again, science, they, these are people that were non believers. And, and there it is. Um, and so um, 
that's probably why it's my favorite one because it's um it, you know it, it stops and you know there's it, he left it so they didn't fully uh transform mm -hmm. um and that's the only one that's like that so it's yeah it's, it's fascinating so each one has a little different aspect and what year was the one what was what year was the one in poland the first one 2008 and then there was October one October in... 12, 2008. October 12th is the same day that Carla Cudis died just two years earlier in 2006. And who is that again? He's the uh, he'll be the first millennial saint. Uh, and he did he did web designs. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, about Eucharistic the, miracles. The young man, the right? The young, the young man. Yeah, he did a whole thing on the Eucharistic miracles. Yeah. And and he has some amazing sayings like he would and he, he didn't come from a very devout family. And um Every time they pass by a church, he'd say, I want to go in and see Jesus. So this kid from an early age, he died at age 15. This kid right. from an early age fell and knew the real presence. And he says, you know, if you, you sit in front of the sun, you get a suntan. If you sit in front of the Eucharist, if you, if you, you, you stop and pray in front of the Eucharist, you become a saint. Mm -hmm. I, mean, this, I mean, this is a kid. So clearly God was, again, trying to help us. He knew we'd be in this time that we need this that hey science can explain everything well science can't explain this the only explanation is that really is truly well you know by the blood soul divinity of jesus christ yeah and the next one took place on christmas the next one took place on christmas I, okay that i gotta say something humor. i gotta say something i don't know if it's a sense of humor i think it's a prophecy jesus oh, is yeah. coming back jesus is coming again <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, so, I, I, again, I think he's just showing us in many different ways that truly is him, right? It comes on right. December 25th, on showing December, that it validates yes. that really is his so where, day. So tell us about that. Where was it, and, and how, how did that happen? And and it's in it's in another place in Poland. And the other other interesting aspect of um, of that is that it's named for a saint. Saint they they call him Saint Jack because you can't pronounce it in in Polish. But he is a saint from the 1200s, and he is famous for um, saving the Eucharist from the Tartars that were invading mm. at that time, 1240 in the 1200s. And who were the Tartars? He's called the Apostle of the North. Who, who were the so Tartars? So it's at a church named after a saint who was defending the Eucharist, just like they were early. They were early, you know, in the and early the Tartars church, was the Mus were the Muslims invading. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, and he saved the Eucharist, and and they, his footprints were in the in the in the water. He's he's a famous saint, okay. and um, and and it's, so he was in a church named for someone who was trying to save the Eucharist. And in, back in the first couple of centuries, one of the, one of the early martyrs was a you know a young boy, a Roman boy, who was taking the Eucharist to someone that was sick and was attacked and wouldn't give it up. So so that's why I think I think that's why the Holy Spirit uh, picked. Put that but anyway mm. same thing it is um it is a uh, heart tissue it's live heart tissue type ab blood i think that's the one oh, wait, that well, hasn't been so so what happened they were what so same thing it, it fell, fell to, to the, the ground, ground put it in a vessel didn't yeah didn't it didn't dissolve all the modern eucharistic miracles as opposed to the ones before were doubting priests in, in none of these stories, none of these events that happened were the priests doubting. This was really for us, just like we talked about before. The road to Emmaus is really for us. This is for us. Yeah, yes, the ones for the priests were too, but God knew we would need this. And again, 70% of Catholics don't believe in the real presence. So that's partly because, you know, in America, we live in a Protestant world that doesn't believe in the real presence. So and so we've we've kind of invited that. And um, and we think science can answer everything. Science can only answer uh, what, how, it can't answer why. So the real question is why the Eucharistic miracles? And again, to show that this stuff is real and um, He's trying to help us as much as we can. Well, it's just well, up to us to. So, so to what happened follow. in this case? That it fell to the ground, and then what happened? So, this is the one. I, I don't think it's been fully approved yet by the bishop. But again, it's been taken to alt multiple uh, scientists, and um, uh, and they all say the same thing. It's living heart tissue, white blood cells in the in the ventricle walls, um, and that again, pretty recent, twenty thirteen. 
yeah. So, so that's the latest one. I mean, how many more is he going to do? I think that's, <laughs> I, I've seen well, enough. <laughs> so, he does. He does one every every morning right next door. I'm right next to the Catholic Church. Exactly. Morning, that's what we, that, that's there's a what Eucharistic he's miracle, us. right? Because we remember this is different. He's he's actually showing us because he's invisible, right? The veil's removed for these Eucharistic miracles. The veil is still there, and remember. There's there's hints to it in the Bible, you know. You, you get to see, you know, I you know, I will be with you to the end of days. Well, guess that's how he is for the Eucharist, right? And 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 also uh, remember when he says to uh, doubting Thomas, those who see me, well, we get to see him, and that's really what Eucharistic mm. adoration is. So, mm. you know, what I always say at the end of all this is, what's really important is that we start doing Eucharistic adoration because we, like we said before, we're in this huge spiritual battle over truth. And Jesus is the answer. The Eucharist is the answer. And and again, what people forgotten too is um, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, who studied under uh, Polycarp, and Polycarp uh, studied John. under um, uh, no was John, John. John and did John it was under John, and then uh, maybe it was Polycarp and under Justin yeah, Martyr, and, and, and then. And, yeah. yeah, and and and, and, uh, and they and what did he call? What did he call? He, so, so Saint uh, he, he called yeah. the med, he called the Eucharist the medicine of immortality. Mm -hmm. We've lost that. Well, you, you know, and we're, we uh, I'm an athlete, and you are, uh, you look very athletic and fit. One thing I know as an athlete, as you are, what you eat, and when yeah. you receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, you become. Jesus. You That's know, you, right. We are, as and, the early church, lost that. as early church we've fathers teach, we, our goal is to be divinized, to be yeah. little Christ, as they, as, as uh, we were called in the, in the, in the first couple of centuries. We're meant to be, we're meant to be become part of the body of Christ, literally, physically, and in every literally. way, become part right. of the body of Christ. We've been talking with Doctor Scott French. We got to, we got to, we got to split right now. We got to leave, but. Where can they find you, Dr. Scott? How can they reach you? So it's, it's scott at majacenter.com. And, uh, and as we mentioned, I'm actually I'm a volunteer. I'm on the board. Um, I, do, I do this because people need to hear the truth. Yeah, so get in touch with them and, and invite, invite uh, Dr. Scott to come out and, and, uh, and to share with mm -hmm. you. Are, will you give us the aloha right now? We do it with me? All right. All okay. Right, May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha, Aloha. <laughs> from the islands of Hawaii. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.